I'd like to begin by explaining my motivations for creating this DVD. I think it's fair to say that the majority of the population of golfers spend most of their time working on their technique. They work on their drivers, their irons, their wedges, their putters. They build automaticity on the range and take that to the golf course. When things start to go wrong, they invariably look at their technique. So they go back to the range and continue to work on it. As people start to develop their game and move into elite programs, they start to be introduced to the psychology elements of golf. But typically what happens is they get integrated or interwoven with their technical practice. So when they get on the golf course, they're still unsure as to whether or not they've made a technical or a mental error. What I'm doing so unique here is I'm separating these two disciplines. You can continue to practice your technique on the range like you always have done. But what I'm going to show you is how to build a practice routine, which I call the process, which allows you to build emotional control, targeting, concentration and acceptance skills within your practice routine. Where this practice needs to stay on the range, this practice will be taken to the golf course. When you bring these two disciplines together, you start to have a holistic approach to the game of golf. One way I'd like you to look at this is that turned on the side, you'll notice technique is the foundation for the process you're still going to make technical errors and you're still going to make mental errors but what I'm hoping you can see is that you'll start to recognize when you're making which type of error. Now just as technique is the foundation for the process what I want you to understand is we need to understand, understand the foundation principles for the process. If I was just to show you how to put it into practice before you understood why, it would be like building a house on shifting sand. You would not be able to consistently carry out the process. So the first part of this DVD is about explaining the theory behind the process. Then we move on in to show you how to put the theory into practice. Target-oriented golf is putting golf psychology into practice. Once you start to develop practice routines that allow you to have emotional control, both physically and mentally, you'll start to recognize and start to play the game of golf to your true potential. Ten years ago, I was sitting at home, just practicing my juggling. I'd come off the golf course pretty frustrated, as usual. And I got to thinking, what's going on here? How is it I can juggle these balls without any thought whatsoever? It's pretty complex. Yet when it comes to putting this little white golf ball into a hole two feet, four feet, ten feet away, I can turn into a conscious, fearful wreck. What's going on? Do you want to know the answer? So what skills do we need to play golf? Well, I think it's fair to say that the majority of people spend most of their time on the driving range working on their technical skills. It may be chipping, putting, long game. But the majority of the time is spent trying to develop a technical proficiency. Now I just want to talk to you a little bit about the learning curve and what process we go through in everything that we do in our lives. You know, at the bottom here, we've got something which is called unconscious incompetence. At this point, you're not really even aware of the skills that you need to be able to perform the uh, whatever exercise you're trying to carry out. When you become aware, you start to practice your skills and you start to become what is known as conscious incompetent. You keep practicing, you keep practicing, as you move up the stages you get to a place of conscious competence where you're starting to actually demonstrate some real skill.
but you're still thinking about the actions required to carry it out. And finally, unconscious competence, where you start just doing, just like I was juggling earlier on. No thought, no mind, just doing. Now, the problem we have when we purely and simply work on our technical skills is this. Majority of the time, we spend cycling between conscious incompetence and conscious competence. What this means is that you're on the range and you're working hard on your technical skills, giving yourself more and more confidence that you're getting your swing in the place where you want it to be. When you go out into the golf course and you start to hit some golf balls poorly, what do you immediately do when the only world you know is technical? What happens is you start to focus your attention on your technique. What's actually happening is you're cycling again between conscious competence and conscious incompetence. You never give yourself a chance to get to this place where you're actually playing golf. Whilst your whole world is built around technical skills, you're constantly dragging yourself back down to this state of conscious incompetence. You go away and practice, you go and play bad golf, you bring yourself back down to here, and you're constantly cycling between these stages. You know, everything we do in our lives, we get to an intuitive state. If it's uh, juggling, golf, juggling balls, for instance, I went through this process where I was focusing on my actions and then eventually I started to focus my attention elsewhere and I was just able to juggle. If you play any musical instrument, you spend a lot of time through repetition learning chords. You're focusing your attention on your actions and whilst you're doing this, you're not actually playing music, you're trying to learn how to control your hands and the chords that you want to play. But eventually, your focus of attention switches away from controlling to playing music. Learning how to type. Initially, you're focused on where your fingers are on the keyboard. But through repetition, you focus your attention on the screen. And you start to let yourself go. Now, every time you get to this intuitive state, as soon as you start to think about what key you're hitting or what chord you're playing, you drag yourself back down into this state of consciousness and it stops your flow. You know, it's impossible to perform when you're conscious of your actions. So if I'm playing a piece of music and all of a sudden I start to think, what chord was that? It stops. If I'm typing and I try and think where is a certain key, I stop. If you're playing golf, and you're thinking about how to swing the golf club. You're playing in a conscious state. Now, as I've demonstrated, the only way we can get to this intuitive state is by switching our focus of attention away from what we're trying to do. Whilst we are focusing on our actions, we can never get to that place. So how, in golf, can we become intuitive? How can we become free? How can we focus our attention elsewhere? Well, let's have a look at what other skills are required. I think it's fair to say that tactical skills, they come about through osmosis for the majority of us. We go out, we play regularly, we learn those skills and we pick up tips and eventually we start to get around the course in the best way we possibly can. The physical side of things, as amateur players, we know if we're injured, our back's hurting, we can't play golf. And I think for most of us, as long as we're feeling reasonably well, we're quite happy to go out and have a game of golf. And life skills. The beautiful thing about golf is it's not just a game. It teaches you so much about yourself and how you deal with adversity on the golf course. It's funny, you know, but a lot of people actually need alcohol to get around the golf course. It's almost like a quick fix for what it is that I'm trying to teach you here. And the problem with alcohol, of course, is it works for a very short period of time, but then the effects kick in and your game goes downhill. 
So these are the skills that I'm going to start talking to you about. And ultimately, my focus here is trying to help you understand the importance of relaxation, concentration, anxiety control. Once we start putting these into your pre-shot and post-shot routines, and you start focusing your attention on these skills, what's happening is you're taking your attention away from your conscious control of your swing to something else. You're starting to learn how to play the game of golf. Until you start to introduce these skills, I don't see a way out of it. You're stymied. Every time there's a problem, you go back for another technical lesson. You bring yourself down to this state of conscious doubt. When you start to incorporate these skills that I'm going to talk to you about, you'll start to realize that it's not necessarily your technique that's letting you down, it's your thinking. And everything I'm trying to achieve here is to separate your technical practice from your mental practice. And I'm going to demonstrate how to practice these skills on the range and on the golf course.